Hey guys, Henning and Morton here for Flip Normals. In this video, we are going to be talking about one of our newest products, the Flip Normal Skin Kit. This is a kit we've developed in order to solve a very specific issue, which is really high frequency detailing when you're making characters. When you do any kind of characters, it's so hard to get all these like nice, nice wrinkles and the pores, the leathery skin, scales and all these things. So we made a kit specifically to solve this. It's, um, it's a kit which has 42 specifically sculpted maps for skin and pores and everything you need there. And then we have a bunch of tileable maps as well. Yeah, like the last time you saw this was probably in the early 2000s from the Noma Workshop. So it's, I feel like it, there's been sort of a, a lack in the market from some really high quality skin alphas. There are a bunch of scattered ones out there, but we wanted to make one resource that had basically all the kind of skin feel that you would ever really need. So in order to to get these kind of nice nice pores, you can drag and drop it in Seabrush and you get this really high quality result right away. Uh, Dragon made by our friend Damien at NPC, where he used it for all the nice scales and everything here. You sure that's a dragon? <laughs> is, it a, is it a wiring? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Same here as well. All the, um, all the skin pores and all the high mm. frequency is done right in the skin kit. It's really good for all sorts of creatures and characters. Really, whatever it is you're doing, this this is this can really help you. This was something we had an idea about for years now. Uh, the first test was probably done when we worked on Pacific Rim, where we had to do a lot of the, the high frequency scales and yeah. skin for it. And it was such a nightmare to do it by hand, because you just can't do it. So we, we went in and just sculpted up a few maps, which you use as a basis, and um, just really perfected the maps you can use. And this is an excellent companion to the Flip Normals Creature Kit as well. Whereas this, you know, the Creature Kit in the, is the, for the beginning stages and this is really for the, the final, final stage where you're doing all the polishing. So let's look into how we can actually use this. And uh, now this can be used for any software. We use it a fair bit in Mari and you can use this in Painter as well. Seabrush is just nice for it because it, it's really intuitive to actually, to actually use it because it's so direct. Yeah. You're not just painting texture maps, you are actually sculpting with it. So we have a little interface down here. We're not going to cover too much of this right now. We'll probably do specific videos on this in the future to really optimize it. But we just want to show you, show you what it's all about. So if we go into Lightbox, we have all the maps here. Now what you find is when you, whenever you're doing a character like this, you might have like 100 graded maps, but you end up using like three <laughs> maps for the entire character. So we just thought, let's just, let's just give you all the maps you actually need. There is no reason to include 1,000 maps when you are going to be using two, three. Yeah. Except for, for, in our case, you're going to use 42. You're <laughs> exactly. definitely going to be using all 42. <laughs> all, at all times for everything. <laughs> so let's just check a look at some of the maps we have. Uh, you just double click them, and then we just have to set the mid value to 50. This just makes the ma maps way, way nicer. And then we change the stroke to drag there. And now we can simply just drag the map out. We really, really quickly, you can make the... Game of Thrones style with stone people. I can't yeah. remember their names, but yeah, it's the nice thing about this pack is that it has so much variation in it. Maybe if you wanted to make like a leather face kind of character, you can just drag that out and do the final detailing here. Um, or maybe some more realistic skin, you could pick one of the other alphas in the pack. Yeah, exactly. We also use this as well, not just for final stuff on top, but also for, for like when you're actually sculpting, then mm. you can smooth it out and you can work on top of it. So you get like this like secondary and tertiary details as well. Yeah, because you can go in and, and use this as a base and then amp up the detail, like start tracing over the, um, the crevices and the peaks here. And then, you know, with something like Damien Standard or whatever to, to really accentuate some part, parts of the face or exactly. parts of the, the alpha. We also have um, two buttons here, which changes the hardness. So um, by default, I prefer to keep the hardness at two, to, uh, well, to hard. So if we now hit the comma key again, we can just check out some of the other. Nice scales for his forehead because he <laughs> is uh, a <laughs> lizard man. It's now a crocodile. <laughs> yeah. Handbag. We'll something. we'll do something like a more some something which actually looks a bit nicer in just a little bit. We just want to show you some of the maps, just some from the variation you can have. Oh, this is a good one. Mm. Just add like a lot of real nice, like yeah, curved curved wrinkles with weight to them. The nice thing about these maps, unlike, um, you know, and this is not to give 
anyone crap for for their maps but we were talking about um surface mimic and texturing xyc which are excellent maps but they're really high quality and they're really high resolution but for most uh for most people who are you know they're just doing sculpts and they're doing their own personal projects even for final projects like this it's really intuitive to just be able to drag and drop you don't have to edit anything you can just hit the mid value of 50 drag it out and pretty quickly you can get a lot of coverage so i think you know this in terms of, of user friendliness and high quality inside a seabrush really takes the cake here. Yeah, that's really what we're trying to do. We're trying to make this as interactive as possible where you can simply just drag this out. And again, the advantage here is you're actually dealing with polygons, so you can easily smooth all this out yeah. and whatever it is you want to do. You can really layer this up. So now we just looked at some of them. Let's actually show you how you can do this in a more like actual practical sense, because obviously you aren't just going to be dragging them out like this. The way I prefer to do it is I, I prefer to layer it out. So um, let's just enable symmetry. And then we can layer some of these out. Some of these, they don't actually look that nice by themselves, but they they're not necessarily built to, to just be standalone. For instance, this guy here, skin on three. Uh, by default, this looks something like this, which by itself might be useful, but this is not really where it shines. Where it shines, if we set this here to spray and we can take the laser step down to something like 0.1, and now we can just spray this on top. Yeah, and you get instant coverage. Exactly. You just get such a nice little basis for it. It's not just it's not just like noise, but you can see you get like different variation of skin and you get these almost like pores and mm. this is this is just really nice to have as a base. And this becomes really powerful if you work with this with a morph target let's say you say you say store morph target and use the morph brush in the ui then you can slowly start to paint areas out that you might not need again um, so it's, uh, it's it's very very handy this way so now we can, now we just store a morph target and now we can just like what we were just talking about now we can just really balance it out and certain mm -hmm. areas you really don't want yeah because you don't want equal detail everywhere no now we can see his nose needs a little bit more work <laughs> <laughs> Just disable symmetry for this, and then we can just go over it. And and again, this this specific step here wouldn't be to, to you know, you're not going to present this and be like, ta-da, I'm done. What this step here is, is just to lay down a foundation. It just means you're breaking the surface up, and instead of having a perfectly smooth surface to work on, you're just building up something which has a little bit of undulation. And, you know, there are some crazy people that paint or sculpt all this by hand, <laughs> which I would never yeah. recommend no, to do, not even do for the challenge or whatever. Uh, like when you have alphas like this that do 99% of the work for you, that's that's really what you should be using your time on. I, th I personally, I think. Yeah, it, it just becomes insane when you're just gonna start doing this by hand. Like imagine doing this stuff by hand, like that yeah. is crazy. So then once we have a layer of this, then we can add a layer of, uh, of pores on top. The pores here are real nice. Let's see, we have a few different kinds. And with this as well, you can also uh, just straight up a spray and you're like, Ta-da, instant pores. Uh, but I personally prefer to, uh, to go in with the drag rect and uh, just really just place them by hand. Because these are really hand sculpted and they're really nice for getting, getting specific wrinkled pores down. Yeah, and I think these maps, these maps specifically are the ones that are kind of hard to find. Yeah. Because um, you might be searching for free maps for free alphas online. And I think of this quality, I, I haven't really been able to find anything that matches it. Um, I've done some myself where I've, without alpha sculpted skin pores. So painful. You like you smooth valleys and peaks and valleys, and then you try to go in and, and make it nice with like some noise. But with an alpha like this, which is hand sculpted, and to replicate what skin pores look like, it just gives you a completely different feel. Yeah, like you know, already within a few few seconds, you can already get coverage with pores. Yeah. What's interesting when it comes to pores as well is um, they're they're quite different across the face as well, very in terms of intensity, in terms of shape. So you you probably want stronger pores here and on the nose as well. You probably want quite strong pores, but um, you really don't want to just add pores everywhere. <laughs> no. You really don't see a lot of pores around the eyes, for instance, because the skin is so delicate. Maybe you want some, but you want low intensity, and uh, you just really want them to be really quite small. 
this is what we keep talking about in all the videos. You want to really observe what it looks like. When I was sitting in school from these kind of examples, I was sitting with a mirror next to my desk <laughs> and just like like using my the flashlight from a phone yeah. and just like flashing up face to really see what's going on there. This is so hard to see what's actually going on. Yeah, like if you compare the pores on your nose, it's probably a little hard, a little easier to see on this like on the classic sailor who's alcoholic <laughs> kind of type with a bloated nose, right? The, the pores are quite big on the nose, but you look on the forehead, the forehead pores are, are tend to be a little more smooth. Yeah, exactly. It's it's very interesting seeing seeing like actually observing it because you have a lot of pores in like this region. Yeah. But then once you get more up here, you don't really have that much anymore. Let's try out another one. We have some we have some different kinds here. This one is quite nice, leathery skin. Um, this one is really good for getting some some bigger skin breakup. And I use this in in conjunction with each other. And you just go back and forth. Oh, hit mid value fifty. And now you can just see you get this nice breakup for it. You probably want to take the intensity down a little bit, just so that you can't necessarily see the exact texture of it, but it just it just breaks it up. This is really nice to do, particularly early up and early in your sculpting, mm. before you really get into all these crazy details. Then you you just break it up a little bit, and you can smooth it out, and you can sculpt over it. Yeah, you can see they have they have so many different use cases. The leather skin here, for example, on on a low intensity, gives you more of like an undulated surface. So whereas you know if you if you used it with a higher intensity on a more clean mesh then you get that more leathery feel. So it's just about experimenting with the brushes, experimenting with the modes, whether it's drag wrecked or it's in spray mode. It's There's really no one use for for any alpha, I think. No, and a lot of them I've kind of found by accident because I, <laughs> uh, let's say this alpha here, now I haven't tried this before, so now we're freestyling a little bit. But um, let's say we're just trying this with, free, with um, the spray now. Like maybe maybe this, this works, maybe it doesn't. But like, you know, you can just experiment with it and get yeah. interesting results. Because the the maps are of such high quality and they can be used, can be used in such a versatile way. And I think one of the really cool things about this pack is that it just helps you get to that stage that's really hard to achieve. You know, a lot of zebra sculpts they come out of ZBrush looking like zebra sculpts because most of them are kind of clean, even though some of them have like you know amazing form and it's awesome design. Maybe they're just missing that like last five percent, which is going to be the details on top. Yeah, that, that's been my primary problem when dealing with zebra sculpts is that you, you do all the sculpting and it's so much fun, but the last part to get to this level here has just been a real pain in the ass to get to. Yeah. Because you, you I mean, you're not going to sculpt by hand unless you're Chris, Chris Costa and you're, <laughs> and you're a crazy person. <laughs> but, um, you know, for, for us regular mortal people, like you're just not going to sculpt it by yeah. hand. Even uh, we, if you're Chris Costa, I, I don't know. Personally, <laughs> I don't think you should sculpt it by hand. But, you know, that's up to you. But we also have um, these are these are very simple, and you know, these really mm. didn't take a whole lot of time to make compared to the other ones. But this these are the ones some of the ones I find I use the most because there's so much individual breakup on skin, which you always assume that you have the pores. They're like the breakup, but you really have a lot of these small little pimples and just general imperfections in the skin which can just break up the skin. It can just break it up so much and just look way nicer. It's like once you have a perfect layer on, on, of pores on the skin, then you, it's almost like you don't really see the pores anymore because now you have such nice undulation. Yeah. But now you have like a teeny tiny bit of this kind of breakup and it just, you can just really make it pop. And obviously, like you can misuse these alphas as well. If you just splatter them all over the surface and you use the regular skin alpha for pores for everywhere, then it's not going to look right. Uh, the key is to look at a real, like if you're doing this for a face, the key is to look at a reference of a face and where to place what. But at the same time, it also gives you the option to experiment. Maybe you don't want to use pores for the face. Maybe you do want crocodile, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, scales or something. Um, and that's where this, I think this kit is really powerful. We can also, um, if you want to give him some nice little holes in the face, because he <laughs> has, uh, he's been thrown, somebody has thrown acid in his face. This is like a new level of scars for you. Like now you have the ability to do infinite amounts of <laughs> scarring. And These kind of things are really nice. Uh, this specific alpha here was inspired by, I think it was an old dinosaur foot, which still had some skin attached to it somehow, but it had all these like perforated, beautiful little holes here. It just mm -hmm. makes you look like a zombie. <laughs> or maybe he like, there was like an IED next to him when he was stationed <laughs> in Afghanistan. Yeah, and... poor man. 
Oh, yeah, he's, he's really, he's like, look, looks like the moon now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking you can also use, um, use these for actual for environment as well. And mm -hmm. uh, when I was making these, I thought that you could use actual environments for, for skin, like cracked, uh, a cracked rock and cracked yeah, yeah. earth. There's probably a lot of stuff you can do. But if you if we were to take spend a bit more time on him and not just randomly throw out <laughs> stuff like this, then we can get to um, level which is a bit more refined. Which is uh, this is something I actually spending just a bit more time on, which um, you have a lot of actual bespoke sculpt sculpting here, and we spend a bit more time just working up some of the more mid frequency. Yeah. Uh, but you're talking like you know half an hour of, of actual work here, which is which is really crazy. If if I had this when I was working in production. This would have saved me so much time. Yeah, so we really feel like this is the ultimate skin kit that you need for finishing up your sculpts. Like Henning mentioned as well, you could use it for environments. There's room for a lot of experimentation with this. But essentially, uh, we believe this is the best skin alpha pack out there currently. So if you want to pick this up, make sure to check out it. Uh, check it out on the Flip Normals Marketplace. And maybe have a browse for some of the other cool products that are there as well. And please let us know what kind of creatures and characters you make you use this kit on, because we really love to see end results for this. It's so, so awesome to see what kind of stuff this, this can be used for. And if you have ideas for other alphas that can be added to the pack in the future, we'd be more than happy to try and add something to accommodate uh, even more people.